Live from the Man Cave, Treadmills and Tangents with Coach Aaron Saron and his army of wellness warriors. Live in discussion of all things health and wellness, along with community topics they happen to stumble upon. And good morning, Omaha. Welcome back for another edition of Treadmills and Tangents, your health and wellness show. I am Coach. I'm here solo today with just Timmy. Yeah, man, apparently nobody else wants to come in and drink coffee with you. Really the, gang, the gang's working today. I, I guess. Man. The man is keeping them down. Yeah, so we're live from the man cubby. Well, actually, it's more like the in-law suite now. I opened the door and found a air mattress in here because my mother-in-law was staying. And we actually have a, a pseudo spare bedroom in our basement. There's a, a full queen-size bed, but she didn't want to stay down there. Fair enough. So my, I, I can't win. The, the higher powers are telling me I'm not supposed to have a man cave. Like you're, you're, I went from a man cave to a man cubby to now a man cubby being shared as the in-law suite. Here's the only good news. There's no longer a room in the man cubby for me to do push-ups. So I feel like this episode, <laughs> I can push the boundaries a little bit. It might be all right. There's a spot in the corner we could we could that, make shift. Yeah, that's true. But I was just like, man, I can't I can't win. Like some somebody's telling me, I just need to get that basement finished. <laughs> I. I do. We are getting ingress window put in, which is going to cost me more money than I ever thought a window should cost somebody. Yeah, those ingress windows are no good. Well, the problem is, is like that where I want to put it, um, my HVAC units are in the same spot, so I have to move those. Oh, and gotcha. then where I need to move those, guess what? There's a big thorny bush that I now have to move as well. So this uh, simple task of putting a window in has turned into a monstrosity of a project. Oh, the joys of homeownership. No kidding. I'm you just know, annoyed that there wasn't one in already, but it right. is what it is. It's an older home. But, before yeah. the old, uh, before Marissa, our former uh, secretary, office administrator, manager, whatever exactly she was at the gym left, you, that would have been a great project for her. Yeah, no doubt. Years. She is quite pull, the... Pull uh, that bush out, move the age back. She's quite the Bob Vila type. Absolutely. Little little reference to this old house. You might be, <laughs> you might be too young for no, that. No, I remember Bob Vila. I, I, was, I, I love was, Bob I Vila. I was a very big Bob Vila man. I, I loved him. Uh, this old house is not quite the same without Bob. Dude, what's uh? So we were looking on Twitter today, and we found this concept of ikigai. Yeah, and, hopefully uh, we're pronouncing that right. We, we tried to pronounce it about five. There's times, no so. chance for pronouncing yeah. that right, man. Ikigai. So ikigai is a Japanese concept, and it's a it's a combination of words ikiru, uh, which means to live, and kai, which is the realization of what one hopes for. And it's actually a very cool concept. So what ikigai is all about as it, it takes four concepts of what you love, what you're good at, what the world needs, and what you can be paid for. And as these concepts overlap, they create regions. So for example, when what the what you love concept and what you're good at overlap, that creates passion. That's what your passion is. Sure. You know what's funny is when I when I teach at UNO, I always I always joke it's my little jab at uh, incredibly rich people. So every, you know, when uh, Uncle Warren, Warren Buffett comes and talks to you, you know, and he always brings his buddy Bill, Bill right. Gates. Right. And there's always one kid every year that asks, what's your advice for a, a newly graduate going out in the workforce? And they always say the same thing. Do what you're passionate about. Right. And my running joke is, yeah, of course they want to hire someone who's passionate so they can pay you for 40 and you'll work 60. Absolutely. <laughs> right? right. Yeah. But the higher purpose is do something you love because you'll do it for free. Right. right. That, that's that's what passion is. But yeah. You put more work into it and do a better job because yeah, you also yeah. get that feeling of satisfaction out of what you're doing. Well, it has nothing to do with the results. It's it's the process of. Sure. Right? That's what yeah. passion is. Like you'll sit there, like people game for hours on end. They don't care if they win, just the process of gaming. For right. some people, it's exercise. Some people, it's martial arts. Like for us, it's martial arts. Right. So it has nothing really to do with the realization of achieving anything. It's just the process of. Like yeah. it's the journey. You know, it's that, that open and closed mindset, the open mindset. It's not about results. It's about the process of doing. And that's what really passion is. So anyway, so now when what you're good at overlaps with what you can be paid for, that becomes your profession. Which makes sense. Right? And then what you can be paid for and what the world needs becomes your vocation. You know, there, there's this concept of zone of genius and zone of competency, right? So your zone of competency is something that you're very good at. You don't necessarily like to do it, but you have an expertise and you're good at it and people pay you for it. Whereas your zone of genius moves more towards your passion. It's, it's something that you just love to do and you'll just do it for hours on end. Uh, you may not necessarily be able to make a profession out of it or a, a job out of it, but ideally the two becomes become one, right? Right. Your zone of genius is your zone of, of competency. When what the world needs overlaps with what you love, that becomes your mission. 
your mission in life. And the beauty of this is when these all overlap together, that is Ikigai. Your reason for living becomes what your realization for hope is. A reason for being. A reason for being overall. So when what you love, what you're good at, what you can be paid for, and what the world needs all overlap, that becomes your Ikigai. Yeah, That's right. pretty cool. And we'll throw this up on the Facebook so you guys can look at it because there's a couple of other little things in here that it has when your profession and vocation overlap. Um, you would be comfortable, but you have a feeling of emptiness because you're not getting that what you love on that side. So um, we'll throw this up on the Facebook page so you guys can actually go look at it and see yeah. this sort of graphic. What are the others? Cool. The, when mission and vocation overlap, you have excitement, but complacency. Uh, you have a sense of uncertainty. When mission and passion overlap, there's a delight and fullness, but there's no wealth, which makes sense. Sure. <laughs> you're broke, but you love what you're doing. Right. It's kind of like being a, a martial arts school owner. <laughs> And then with passion and profession overlap, you have satisfaction, but a feeling of uselessness, uh, which is really kind of what a lot of people feel in, in most of their jobs. Right. You know, it's yeah. just like, hey, I'm just going through the motions and, you know, you get comfortable, but, you know, I'm getting paid, but I have no zip or right. zest like of in, life, you as they say. Anything, yeah. uh, and that's tough. That's just not the tough final job you wake up and you're eager to go to every day. I, I think, you know, we all get in that rut of just... You know, time to make the donuts, right? And, and off you go. And you just got to kind of, how do you keep it fresh? You know, and this Iki guy is that idea of everything comes together. It's like the perfect storm, right? I wonder how many people. How close do you think you are? Um, for my, I was actually just thinking right before you asked that. For my my day to day That's job, that's ESP, dude. And, and it's almost ESPN in my uh, <laughs> IT job. I was saying pretty close. Um. I, uh, my job changes every day. There's always new problems. We're always changing technology and, and things are moving around. So, um, I would say it's really close. I've also found that I have, like, I love when kids use technology to learn, I get super excited. So as I get to go in and see that, and I get to go into some classrooms, um, I would say I'm, I'm, I'm pretty close to it. It's, you know, I make, I make a good amount of money on my wife and I live comfortably and, uh, I like going to work. There's probably some days, a few days that I know there's it's just not going to be, or at the end of the day, I don't feel like I achieved something, but most days I leave work and feel like I've made a difference to at least one person. So and at the good. gym, I say it's spot on. I mean, I, I don't, uh, you know, help teach at the gym. I don't do it to, to get rich because I do it because I love it. And I still love going and doing it. And it's so much fun. And then you teach somebody something and then when it finally clicks and, and it starts to happen, I get so excited. Like I'm almost more excited than they are. We had a girl just this week who is a softball player. She she did class last week and then came back again this week. And I said, you know, we're boxing. And she's like, well, I've never done it before. So I we were working on our cross. So it was just one motion. And then I, I had walked to help somebody else. And I heard just the pop on the pad when you know it's perfect. And I spun around. And she had a smile on her face. And I was like, yes. Like, that's it. Like, I, I get so excited. So at the gym, I'm for sure in there all the time. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure where I'm at. I, I got my hands in, in so many things. You know, I teach at UNO, or I run the gym over at Mid-American Martial Arts. I'm still a reservist in the Air Force. And man, I, I, I look at the same like, wow, I'm all over the board. You know, each one of them, I'm, I think I'm in a different area. But, you know, when you think of life, I don't know. Because I always feel like, like me personally, I always have this, for whatever reason, I'm sure I'm just screwed up psychologically, which we all are to an extent. Sure. I'm sure. But me personally, I always have like this sense of urgency. Like, I, for, I don't know, for, for as long as I live, I've always had this sense of urgency that I need to get stuff done. I'm always chasing whatever goal. I don't even know what that goal is, to be quite honest, but I always have this sense of urgency. Like, I got to get something done. Like, time is running out. Like, you're um, a mouse chasing that piece of cheese. Well, I, I, I know. I always just feel like time's running out. And I don't know if that's since I turned 40, you know, sure. a few years back that, yeah. you know, you kind of get that sense of mortality. Now you think about it a little more, but. You know, for me, I'm, I always feel like time's running out. So I never feel like I'm achieving enough. I never feel like I'm, I'm getting where I want to go. You know, so sometimes I have to stop and, and force myself to reflect and go, man, okay, where was I before? Where am I at now? And where was I compared to a year ago? And that helps me put some things in perspective. And it helps put something like this into perspective because I, I get tied up into this, the day-to-day -day rat race sure. sometimes. And I just forget to stop and smell the roses, which I think is very important when you talk about a model like this. You know, to to do some self reflection and where you at. You know, what are you appreciative of? You know, we sometimes we don't. Not sometimes. I know I don't personally appreciate what I have because I'm always driving towards something else. Sure. Right. And well, it's not it's not that it, it's it's a, a never enough thing. Like I need more money. 
Right. Like, I need more. It's it's not even that. It's just it's just need to kind of make it better, make things better than what they are, make the gym better, be a better teacher, you know, advance my career uh, through the military. Whatever it happens to be, there's always like something. There's something that needs to be done. Sure. Like, there's never not something that needs to be done. Have you ever done the strengths finder? The, yes. Yes, what, I have. What's your number one? Do you know? I don't remember. <laughs> you will be surprised. Um, I got. I've gotten. You know. You know those things because I, I tend to answer middle of the road on a lot of stuff. Like it, it, for me, it depends what kind of mood I'm in that day. Sure. And you know when you when you tend to answer middle of the road, any little tweak to the left or to the right on any one of the answers can change what category you fall in. Uh, I've been labeled as an entrepreneur a lot of times. I've been labeled, I can see that. I've been labeled a dreamer sometimes. Have I've been labeled a leader. No. Okay. Futuristic how? Like sci-fi? Like No, like, uh, so I had a boss that was futuristic, so he was always thinking 10 years down the road, all the time. Okay, like a strategist. Yeah. So, so this is mine. I just pulled it up here. I, you guys obviously on the radio can't see that. I it just says woo. Pointed point at the theater. Right. Woo, which is winning others over. So anyone oh. that has ever met me. <laughs> like not woo-hoo. Right. I'm not a woo girl. Unless I've had a few too many drinks. And then sometimes, I mean, you know. Uh, so, so the, the, the woo is I enjoy the challenge of meeting new people and getting them to like me, which I would say for anyone who, when they meet me, would say that's true. I'm a very friendly person. I like, uh, I like to make people happy. It's one of my greatest assets and also probably one of my biggest downfalls because I'll put people before myself a lot just because I like other people to be happy. Um, but so the strength finder is in interesting. And I think this is something that, that falls into one of the reasons I, I feel like I'm closer um, to that sweet spot because when I do things at work that I, I fix things and I can put people you know things in people's hands to make them successful and help them learn then they're happy which give me my sort of that uh, sense of self-worth so I feel like I'm in that zone because I'm my number one is to to please other people which both of my jobs are that way they're both uh, you know IT doing customer service stuff and then teaching people at the gym so I'm very much a I'm in a position to to help people do things that makes them happy, which in turn makes me happy. Yeah, you, yeah. Have you heard of uh, Brendan Bouchard? Yeah. So he's got some similar, uh, he's got a book, High Performance Habits, which I'm reading, but you can take a test uh, within that book that he'll categorize you how well you do in, in the areas that he's indicated for success, right? There, there's, and oh. I, I uh, the area I always score lower in is influence. I don't feel like I have a lot of influence over people. But uh, there again, it's like what that's coming from my perspective. I don't feel like I have influence, but if you talk to other people, I'm sure they feel like I am very influential in some cases. So I, I think a lot of these tests, uh, sometimes it's like, okay, from your perspective, sure. But that may not be everybody else's reality. Right? I was going to say I'm, that surprises me because I uh, like me personally. I know you've been super influential in my life, or both personally and professionally. So, um, but. It, it, it's all in the eye of the beholder. So obviously there's there's things there that make you see it that way. But I, I respectfully disagree and feel like you are an influential person. Well, I, I think it's the setting too. You know, the setting, like for example, you know, I don't feel like I'm as influential at UNO because I'm still very junior faculty there. Sure. You that know, and sense. then my, my, my level of influence within the military is much better than my level of influence, obviously, within my own business. So, but what it's referring to more is he calls it his uh, indicator assessment test, his action indicator assessment test. And I think it's it's just your influence over people in general, like to get things done. Like you can okay. you can lean on somebody, uh, call in favors or get somebody to take action or, you know, raise money when you need it because you can make the right phone calls, things like that. Gotcha. Definitely interesting. So icky, icky guy. Icky guy. Icky guy. Yeah. Well, like I said, guys, we'll throw this Check up it on out. The Facebook so that you can go on the Facebook. Now I sound like I'm 70. All the time. Facebook. We'll throw it up on, on our Facebook page. Which uh, you can get to through pages. the interweb. Right. The internets if you got it. Um, <laughs> check it out. We'll post it up there so you can kind of see these. Um, and you can get a picture of it instead of us just talking about it, how all those four circles kind of start to come together. It, it's super interesting. So check it out. Let us know what you guys think. All right, man. We're going to uh, – I, I got to talk about this. It's been bothering me for a couple of days now. I had somebody in the gym bring up the idea. It's actually uh, our new front desk and executive assistant at mid American Martial Arts, Susie. She turns to me one day. She goes, have you heard of this cool sculpting thing? I was like, what? Cool sculpting. So I immediately looked it up. So check this out. This is a big trending thing right now. And what? people are paying serious money. Like serious money. <laughs> like 2500 bucks a pop in some cases wow. to get this done. 
So cool sculpting is the, the non-invasive liposuction. What it is, you are freezing fat cells All right. with the idea that once you freeze the fat cells, they die and never come back and your body just processes them out and gets rid of them. And once they're gone, they're gone. So how did this all come about? Like what, what person decided to try to freeze their fat? Like, like, was this like a, a college dorm challenge or something? Like, I wish people could have seen the, 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 the jaw drop on my face as I started to look. So I pulled up the website and there's a lady on a treadmill on a yoga ball with a skateboard and weights in her hands and it says not cool cool sculpting is an actual name that's a trade name right. of a company cool sculpting like but it's actually called cryolipolysis right so cryo being cold lipolysis meaning um the ridding of a fat so what happened uh where it came from is uh a bunch of years ago a couple of harvard professors of course this came from harvard of course uh we're doing a study let's get one thing out of the way guys um I'm in academia, by no means am I, do I consider myself an academian, but I've seen studies and I, and I see the studies that a lot of these professors put out. By no means am I poo-pooing on any of the professional academians out there and tenure professors, they do great work, but there's a lot of pressure to get published. And part of the job is getting published to con continually increase the academic prowess of the universities. Needless to say, not all of these studies are the greatest studies or, or well thought out or, or very scientific in sure. your stretch. You get a little bit of data, you write an article and you run with it. You almost trying um, to get the five minutes of fame, so to speak. Well, not, not even that, there's, there's, there's a need to get published. You gotta get published so sure. many times throughout your tenure. So these two Harvard professors, um, Dieter, what's his name? Dieter Manstein and Rox Anderson. That sounds like Dieter Manstein and Rox Anderson. Sounds like a WWF or WWE uh, tag, tag team. team right? like, <laughs> they just come out of the back with their, their cool stuff. From parts right? unknown. Right. Wait, unknown. Anyway, so they, they were observing kids eating popsicles. Now, check this out, dude. So they saw that the kids' cheeks would, would redden and then dimple. And they realized that these popsicles were actually freezing and eliminating small pockets of fat cells. So they started to, through deductive reasoning, said, hey, you know what? Uh, the idea that cold could specifically target subcutaneous fat uh, without damaging the surrounding tissue or the skin, which again became the crux for cryolipolysis, which is what cool sculpting is based on. Now let's think about this logically for a minute, right? Because I'm sure there's some science behind it. I just wanna think about this logically, everybody. If every time a kid ate a popsicle that killed fat cells in their head. How many popsicles would kids eat before they all started lo looking like Skeletor? I'm, right? I'm, yeah. Maybe, a summer, maybe? I'm... It doesn't even make sense to me. Like the fact that, okay, hey, once they're dead, they never come back. So we saw these kids eat popsicles and they and they killed off some fat in their cheeks. Like- I'm pretty sure the more popsicles eat- the There's not a kid with, there's not a kid with any, there be, wouldn't be a kid with any fat oh, in their head God. around the world. <laughs> Right? It's like, how many times do you eat ice cream in here? You'd, you'd kill off fat in your head within a year. It's I would ridiculous. Never had a keto. <laughs> ice cream works. Let's just, let's call it space. So, space. so that, that alone makes me want to, want to poo poo this. So then I did some research and, you know, of course they're going to say, once you freeze the fat, it never comes back. Right. Cause otherwise, what are they going to sell you on? And then they, there's, I saw, some, I read, did some research where there's a certain temperature you got to get it to. I want to say it's like negative 19 degrees and then or 19 degrees fahrenheit something like that and uh and then it kills the fat nothing else so my first thought was well hell just walk outside butt naked in the winter and you'll kill off all the fat all at once i've also done the polar plunge like three times i don't think i lost any well i think there's a certain amount of time it has to be under oh, so uh, in, in the spirit of truth i did some research and i came across some some studies several studies specifically at the rate at which cells within your body regenerate okay Okay, and, and every study I found said yes, indeed. While you're born with a certain number of fat cells and your body will try to maintain that certain number of fat cells, fat cells do regenerate like any other cell. Now, different cells regenerate at different rates. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quiz you a little bit because I found this article that lists them out. Oh, Check this out. I'm quiz so how, what's the turnover time for stomach cells? What do you think? Are we talking days? Yes. Uh, 45. Nope, the stomach will regenerate two to nine days. Isn't oh. that crazy? The small intestine, two to four days. Wow. So that's cells dying off and new cells being regenerated. Two to four days, the entire small intestine, the epithelium will regenerate. The lungs, 
alveoli, eight days. Wow. Your tongue, taste buds. This is this was tested on a rat, ten days. Platelets, ten days. Uh, your entire skeleton regenerates cell wise at ten percent a year. Wow. Yeah, isn't that crazy? That is very crazy. So they in this study they also determined and check this out this uh, this came from actually nuclear testing which is how they carbon date stuff determined by half lives and whatnot so they found that your adipocytes which is you know your fat cells will regenerate at approximately eight to ten percent per year so your fat cells do regenerate what well, your body trying to keep the same amount is just its way of trying to maintain homeostasis right a homeostatic state sure uh, but. It only makes sense though, doesn't it? Like if every time you ate a popsicle, you kill off fat in your head, like your body ha obviously must be regenerating fat cells, right? Yeah, right? They're not, they're not, because the thought is, well, there's no more new fat cells. They're just getting bigger. Well, okay, kind of, that, that is true. Then I saw another uh, study and article where it says, um, while it's true that your body stores more fat, the number of fat cells generally stay the same. They're more apt to get bigger. However, there are two exceptions. The body might produce more fat cells if an adult gains a significant amount of weight. In other words, it creates an encouraging environment to uh, create more fat cells. Sure. Or liposuction is performed. Huh. <laughs> so, so what's interesting, is, as I've been reading through this, um, just doing a little quick research, a lot of it is they're talking about like visual uh, vis visual bulges. Excuse me, I could not spit that out. So they're talking about places like the, the a lot of the one is that little kind of like that mommy gut that I, I think women kind of get after pregnancy. They showed that bulge several times, and but the the satisfaction on some of this stuff is like sixty three percent, eighty two percent. So this isn't. Like, so they they advocate it for site specific fat reduction, right? right? Exactly. Which makes sense because how else you, you're not going to freeze your whole damn body to try to pull this off. And you have to follow up. It even shows in here. Like, so your abdomen, they, had, they did 60 patients, and, and every four months you have to go back in for treatment. So it's like you have to follow back up. I, I guess, you know, it just doesn't pass the common sense test for me. Right. Like, just the whole popsicle thing, just, I was like, that is BS. It doesn't make any sense. Right. But it, it also shows that there's side effects of like onset pain. And well, let's think about this. I mean, have you ever fallen asleep with an ice pack on? Yeah. Did you did you really kill all the fat in that spot? No, otherwise my shoulders would have been uh, just nothing a long <laughs> right. time ago. Right um, now, I have seen studies where when you do the like the cryogenic therapy, uh, what they have seen is that you know because you have white fat and brown fat, right? Right. And brown fat tends to burn more energy than white fat. White fat tends to store, whereas brown fat tends to burn. And that's a mitochondrial uh, change, and they've seen that do like cryotherapy you start the process of white fat transitioning to brown fat. And that's what uh, ketosis and keto, a ketogenic state has shown to do as well, is that you will see a transition of white fat to brown fat, and brown fat does burn more energy, and it doesn't store as much fat in itself. So yeah, in, in that respect, I, I could see how some type of cold therapy may cause a change in the body, but not a permanent reduction of fat cells. Your body regenerates. Think about it. If every time it lost a cell, it didn't come back. Now, some will regenerate at slower paces than others. And then we have studies that show that, like the sure. heart, for, for the longest time, cardiologists didn't think the heart regenerated cells at all, but they found that it actually does. But incredibly slow, though. It's, it's interesting that I, I had never heard of this until we just started talking about it. But I'm just poking around on, the, on their website and stuff. This has been been in uh news like on, on rachel ray for example since 2010 so if it really was that um you know that spot on and really did its job i feel like by now it would be way more talked about well it's it's faddish and it takes a while to go mainstream and it's like we've seen this in the past so some doctor comes up with a little bit of data and magically there's a, a formula or a product that serves that outcome and oh hey guess what guess who owns that company Right. The doctor that did the study and produced the data. Okay, or, or shocker. Or did anything on this one. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I don't know, guys. Uh, cool sculpting. Cool sculpting. We're poo-pooing it. Cryolipolysis. I, I don't see it. Um, it, it just it, to me, it just doesn't pass the the common sense approach. Yeah, it's, like it's like if if every time you gave your kid a popsicle, they're losing fat in their head. What would be left of them after a summer? Well, not only that. Like let's talk about like Eskimos. There'd be no fat Eskimos, right? Because they're always super cold up there. I, I've seen some. Well, they're not running around but naked. True, that's a fair point. But they're still pretty cold. I mean, I feel like uh... now they have shown. Check this out. They have shown that they, being you know researchers, have shown that 
that the Eskimo population, Eskimo being a generic term, sure, uh, they do tend to just biologically have more body fat, have a thicker layer of subcutaneous body fat, uh, just from being in cold environments for generations upon generations. Gotcha. Like their genetic makeup, they carry more body fat. Which, Which makes, makes sense. sense. Keep, yeah. Yeah. Keep it, naturally be able to keep their body warmer. Yeah. Anyway, uh, you know, cool sculpting, do it at your own risk, guys. Uh, we do not endorse it. Not that anything needs our endorsement, but it, it just doesn't pass the sanity test for me, guys. And, it, you know, it's, you know, freeze fat. Come on, let's think about it. If you really could do it, you know, there, how many people would be fat out there every time you eat a popsicle? All right, we're going to take a quick break. You're listening to Treadmills and Tangents right here on The Answer, 94.5 FM, 1420 AM, your health and wellness show. We'll be right back. When you walk into Mid-America Martial Arts, you're walking into more than punching and kicking. You're walking into a community, and that is what I think sets us apart from everybody else. We train anywhere from four years old, uh, and we have students as old as in their 60s here. Our main programs are Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, Muay Thai Kickboxing, Judo, as well as our Strength and Conditioning program which is our training for warriors program our main goal is that when people leave here they feel better about themselves you know they're a little bit better as a person they feel a little bit about their life they feel better about their day now, everybody holds baggage everybody has stress this is the place where they can come in and put all that away for a little bit and work on themselves yeah do we hope they can defend themselves better sure do we hope they can punch and kick a little better absolutely none of that matters they don't feel good about themselves and that's the main key if they can walk out of here feeling good about themselves feeling good about their life then then we've won that day mid-america martial arts located at 14951 chandler road in millard give them a call at 402-813-1721 or visit midamericamartialarts.com And welcome back, everybody. You're listening to Treadmills and Tangents, your health and wellness show. It's Coach here with Timmy here this morning. We just got done talking about cool sculpting. I want to talk about this another second here, that if you are getting this type of therapy done to get rid of fat in your body and you're not changing your lifestyle, meaning you're not changing your diet or your exercise routine, guess what's going to happen? It's going to come back. It's going to come back. Or if under, under their idea, if these cells do die off and leave, the others are going to get bigger. Sure. Anyway, so guys, it, it's it's a it's a gimmick, it's a gimmick. Change your lifestyle, change your diet, change your eating habits, exercise regularly, do it the right way. Uh, our, our man Tim, sitting right in front of you guys, has lost what 170 pounds now. 170, yep. 170 pounds, guys, doing it the right way. No gimmicks, diet, exercise, changing his lifestyle. And I, I want to hit on something else here, which really annoyed me. I don't, we haven't talked about this. So a few weeks back. I posted a picture of Tim on our Facebook, and it was basically a before and after. It was a, a shot of him in the ring in, in a, the, the first and the last tournament that he fought in, where he was, what, you were well over three bills. Yeah, I think I was like 310. 310. So he was he was a he was hefty. A little, he was, was a, a big one. A little heavy side. He there. was a big one. Yeah. Right? He yeah. filled out those tie trunks. <laughs> There's yeah, no doubt. Like, yeah, it looked like a small uh, flag. Like, but sure. then he posted a, a, a picture in a similar pose, a recent picture in a similar pose, and they were both. He both had a shirt off, right? Because when you fight Muay Thai, you don't fight with a shirt on, just like right. boxing. So he, he took a picture of himself in his living room with his hand, hands raised, just to show the before and after. And we had somebody make comment about, "Hey, don't post any pictures with your shirt off." Which yeah. you knew what he was getting at. Like, right. You knew and what he the dude was getting at. He said, "Should men wear a bra or something?" And, and I responded and said, "Hey, man, you're missing the point of the photo. It's not, you know, this, that, or whatever. It's, it's that." To show like this is where I was, and by doing keto and changing changing your life, this is where I'm at now. Just because some people I think need to see that some people are visual that before and after it you know is big. Well, seeing that, is believing, right? Right. It's just what it comes down to. Seeing is believing. You know, it's like yeah, this guy's talking about doing this, that, and the other thing, but what does he really look like? Sure. So so we posted the picture. We I can't believe we caught flack. Now we had a bunch of people come to your defense and right. said it was inspirational. Blah, blah. I eventually took that person's comments down because it's not worth the headache, but. It's just beyond me that, you know, here you have somebody who, in your case, lost a bunch of weight, doing good things, and he still had essentially somebody try to fat shame after it's all said and done. And we've talked about fat shaming in here. You know, fat shaming is when you try to alienate somebody, you make fun of somebody, you try to make them feel bad about themselves. There's a difference between friends and training partners going, all right, fatty, let's get going. Right. You know, that's, you know, just some motivational talk, right? That's not what we're talking about here. Like you, I can't, you know, somebody who loses 
a bunch of weight. And that's, that, you know, that's always been a pet peeve of mine. You know, people making fun of, you know, overweight people or people that are out of shape, they're in the gym, they're trying, right? And it's, instead of going over there and helping them or congratulating them or motivating them a little bit, you'll, you'll make fun of them. Yeah, because apparently it, it makes them feel better, which, you know, and I, uh, I, I've i obviously been big most of my life until recently. And so stuff like that, like, I, you know, I didn't, I didn't say anything to the guy like, seriously, like this, that or whatever. Uh, it was more like, uh, man, you're missing the point that I'm trying to just show people this is you know, this is the difference that can be made. Um, so, you, you know, whatever. Some people have that where no matter what, they've got to, you know, they, they want to poke fun or, or say whatever, make themselves feel better. So, well, apparently the cool sculpting is not working for him. Yeah, apparently. Uh, <laughs> or, or it's not working for me. I guess I should, I should get a, I need to get the mommy makeover. Or something. I was just, it, it took every bit that I had not to just lay into that dude. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to delete it. Yeah, I mean, because I just didn't even want it on our page. Yeah. Which, I by said, the way, check out our Facebook. Yeah. yeah. Trend <laughs> I said a couple of things. I kept it because I would post some, or I would start to post, and then I would reread it and be like, "Yeah, I, I probably shouldn't say it that way." I actually I scolded you a little bit because I'm yeah. like, "Dude, it's not worth it. Don't right. get, don't get into it." And you're like, "You're right." Yeah. And, and that's, that's when I deleted it all. Yeah, cause, well, the, the biggest thing that made me laugh is I went to his Facebook because I wanted to see like, okay, what's what's this person all about? And his his little bio was like, "I, I stay away from negative people and all about positive." positivity and making the world a better place and i was like seems rather contradictory that's dude. what we call a hypocrite right. folks yeah so a hypocrite anyway i looked good with my shirt off as all on i was all on damn now. sexy absolutely. is what i would say absolutely in a fat bastard kind of way <laughs> <laughs> a little less these days less, right no no you're, you're i weigh more than you now that's true it's that's kind of the running joke we got i, I got you by 20 pounds yeah sam had me or by 0.1 one day so that was a good joke he's not here to defend himself but we had a good laugh at that too because it was i was always so much heavier than everybody almost everybody at the gym except a couple of people and now i'm you know in like the normal size where i can <laughs> i can bust on you guys a little bit for being on the heavy side yeah, that, that was kind of funny that day you showed me that picture. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm, I'm heavy. I'm 20 pounds heavier than Tim now. What happened? Yeah, no doubt. Now, I've had a couple people ask me, and, and uh, I, I know you'll talk about it because you're pretty open. And uh, people come and say, hey, you know, Tim's lost a lot, a lot of weight. Is he going to have to get that surgery? Because, uh, like, we see Biggest Loser, most people lose just ridiculous amounts sure. of weight. And they always say at the end that, you know, they go to have the consultation about getting the skin reduction surgery and whatnot. You know, I try to tell people, about, you know, Tim did a little different. Like those TV shows, those are extreme weight loss in a very right. short period of time. Uh, you took over a year to do this. Right. And if you look at the, the, the pictures, you can see like, I have, I have a, a little bit of loose skin, not a ton, um, but it's also still shrinking. Like I still measure and check things and stuff. So uh, my doctor, when I went in for my last checkup, you know, kind of gave me the, the, the joke, like, oh, you're going to need a tummy tuck and a boob job. <laughs> so I kind of took that as a challenge. I'm like, well, I'm going to keep doing things the way I'm doing them. Oh, and, yeah? And, and eating right and, and working out and tightening things up and see when I finally get to a point where maybe after six months, nothing's changed. Okay, then do I, where am I at at that point? So I don't have like a big, you know, flap of skin that, that hangs off or anything. So, But really, it's just, it's cosmetic at that point. It's There's sure. no health benefit. Right to doing that and, and the health benefits that you've experienced and, you know, your, your labs are showing are just, you know, 180 degrees from what right, they were. Absolutely. Yeah. You at know. that point it would just be like, you know, if I was ever single again, am I going to troll the market looking for something or I need to tighten up a little bit, but. But I think it just goes to show you uh, where the focus for a lot of people are. It's like, here you've got, you know, yourself who lost 170 pounds, complete lifestyle, not just, not just an image makeover, a complete lifestyle makeover. Sure. And then their first thought is, well, what's he going to look like in a bathing suit? Right. It's like, really? Like, does it, does it really matter at that point? Sure. Yeah. You and know? I, even when I was a, a bigger person, I was never shameful to, I was that guy on the beach. People probably like, man, that guy should probably have a shirt on, but I just have never cared. Like, I don't, if people don't want to look at me, like, well, don't yeah, look at me, that's, that's fine. their deal. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, you so, got to own it. I always tell people, own it. Right. You know, own it. What are right. you covering up for? And now I catch myself in the mirror and I'm like, Hey, big fellow, what you doing? I've always, uh, I've always wanted to write a book. You can ask uh, Scott Farrar in our gym over at Mid America that uh, I, I told him several times, Scott, we're gonna write this book. I want to call it Two Piece Mindset because when, when I've ever gone to like pool parties for my daughter, I would see the moms, right? And I always look at how the, I, I love people watching, right? sure. And I always look at, all right, it's a pool party, and, and you know, women. By no means, guys, is, is this a sexist thing at all? But it's just my observation that you'll have some women. Who are just like, hey, it's a pool. Let's throw the suit on and get in. Right. 
right? Then you'll have others who will put the suit on and, and not touch the water. They're not really there to swim. They just right. they put the bathing suit on, but they have zero intention of getting wet. And then you'll have people who put the bathing suit on, but then cover themselves up. Right. And I sat there and go, I just, I'm always more curious about the psyche of the person in the bathing suit. You have some moms, they'll just hop in the water. And you can tell that they, like you said, they don't have a care in the world what they look like. They're there to have fun with their daughters and their sons. Sure. And they might have a one-piece bathing suit. They might have a two-piece bathing suit. They don't care. Right? They're there to have fun. They're getting in the water. They're splashing around. They're playing with their kids. And then you have uh, others who, who have like a two-piece bathing suit on, but then will cover it up or have a towel around their waist uh, and have like a, like a top on top of the bikini top. And right. I'm like, well, why bother putting the bathing suit on? Sure. Yeah, I, uh, I, don't, I don't know where my, my, I guess my confidence, for lack of a better word, ever came from. But even, even as far back as I can remember younger, I mean, I remember being in uh, like junior high and high school going to the pool and, and guys be like, you got bigger boobs than the girls here. And I, I had no shirt on and I was like, okay. I thought I came here to swim, not to have a boob contest, but whatever. And, and so I just I mean, never. If we're some prize money for the wet T-shirt, right, I mean, let's do right, it. I mean, absolutely. I'm, I'm not, <laughs> I'll jump in. But I, I never had the like, oh man, I should cover up, or, or I don't feel comfortable. And as a matter of fact, in, in that last fight, I had the guy who you know, I did an exhibition from the guy, another guy at the gym, and he wore a shirt because he wasn't comfortable, you know, having his stomach and stuff hang out. And he was like, "Well, aren't you going to wear one?" And I was like. Why? You think I'm gonna take my shirt off and people are gonna be like, "What? That's what's under there?" Like, oh my <laughs> yeah, god! Like, shocker! It's, right? It's not like I'm selling a used car. Spoiler you know? alert! <laughs> Everybody knows I'm I'm overweight at that point. So, well, and what's funny is, you know, it's the same like you're a very confident person, and you strike me as sure. you're confident at work as well. So when I'm watching uh, these women at the pool, I, I was like, okay, now I want to take this a step further. I wonder how confident they are at work. I was like, and I'm betting. Uh, those that are just hopping in the pool and not really worrying about anything are incredibly confident in their other endeavors in life. Right. Whereas the others who are just or more worried about the, what they look like or in appearances, there's not as much substance to them. Right. And that's probably a gross, not probably, it is a gross generalization. But I was like, man, I want to write a book about this. Just like observations from the kit from the pool. Yeah. Right. And just based on what people are wearing in terms of bathing suits, like the psychological makeup behind that and, and their confidence levels and whatnot. And I always, I always admired just the women who just hop in a pool and not care about it. Right. And, and not cover themselves up. Like, why are you wearing the bikini bottom if you're going to put a towel around it? Right. You don't feel comfortable? Okay, fine. Right. Then, then wear, wear pants. Right. Or wear shorts. Do something like, else. Like, I don't understand it. It's like, you, you want to be a part of the club, but you don't want to be part of the club, right? right? Yeah. And, and there's more to it than that. Right? Sure. We're generalizing uh, at the same time. But you know what I notice? And, and I think this is this is a difference. You know, if you ever read the book, Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus, or is it the other way around? I don't know. No, that's right. Pluto right. might be in there, too. I'm not sure. Yeah. Which, which isn't really a planet anymore. But anyway. anyway. Rest in peace, Pluto. Um, it is a dwarf. What's it? A dwarf planet, I think is what it's called. Yeah, I believe that's correct. Uh but anyway, um, you know, if you notice guys, most guys, when they go to the pool, just throw their shirt off and hop in, you know. Beer belly and all. Beer belly and all. They don't really care. Once in a while, you see some guys wear, you know, like a compression shirt. Uh, usually, it's people that are fair skin and don't want to get fried. Right. Uh, but I, I noticed that. It's like the the, the big, big difference in, in getting in the water and, and what, what you're wearing at the pool between men and women. It fascinates me. I wonder if part of that comes from um, you know, a lot of women are... Or women can be pretty catty, not not to be again sexist, but but they can be. Um, and so I wonder if some of them are just they're they're worried about what what other women are going to say or how. Oh, one hundred percent true, because I I've heard it myself. Sure. That oh my god, look, I can't believe she's wearing that. Right. Her boobs are hanging out, and I, I've never heard a dude right. say, "Look at his shorts." Right. <laughs> I've never you I've know, never heard it. You know what, ladies? It's pool season. If you go to the pool, have fun. If someone has something to say, that's their problem, not yours. Here's what I will say is I, I think most most guys uh, will admire a woman who's just willing to get in the bathing suit and hop in the right. water. Right. And, and right. be confident. Man, no matter your shape, size, whatever, none of that matters. Just own it. Right. Love it. Right. Love, love who you are and everything else is whatever. And I think once you start doing that, then if you do seek to make any change, that'll start to happen. Sure. Right. It, the more you can start to, so, so a big thing that I've always told people when they ask, like, well, what made you decide to start to do it? Well, obviously, I started keto the day my son Grant was born, and that was a big part of it. Like, man, I really should, probably should be around for him. But another part was like, 
man, I love who I am and I have so much fun. And the only thing that frustrates me is physically where I'm at, how I feel sometimes. So why would I not want to make myself better? Like, you mean it wasn't me calling you fatty boobatty every day? No, no, not Damn. at all. Damn, <laughs> I thought, I thought, I thought I was the crux like, of all the change. <laughs> <laughs> like, like really, like, and I told people like I, like I love myself to the point that I did this mostly for me because I love me enough to put myself first to make sure I make time for myself to go to the gym to make sure I'm eating the right stuff to to tell to make sure that I know no I shouldn't eat candy every day like it's common sense stuff but you've got to get to the point with yourself that you're like well uh, in general if you're changing for somebody else vice your kids sure. which that was part of your change right I, I think any change you make if you're changing for somebody else it's not a genuine heartfelt change that you're doing Right? It's not something that's going to last. Yeah, it's not going to be Cause, because it's 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 external to you. It's not it's not for you. It's not a right. part of you. And and once that person leaves your life, then what? Right. Right. Or Do you revert back? What they say. Or right. or they or they lose they just lose interest or right. they just they moved on to something else. Sure. Themselves, you know. So I think anytime you know, I had a roommate. She she was pretty young, and she had gotten uh, breast implants because she just wasn't confident in her body and she felt that's what she needed. It was about a year after she got them, she actually confided in me. She goes, you know what? I I'm not sad that I got them, but she goes, it really doesn't change anything. Right. right? She goes, I, I still have confidence issues. I still have image body image issues. Like it didn't, it didn't ultimately fix right. what I thought it was going to fix. Yeah, it's not the quick fix. Well, because it's cheaper, right? Because you're right. not, you know, you're, you're changing for what you think other people view you as, right? And not what's going to what's making you happy. And I think a lot of times we convince ourselves, "Hey, I'm this. I'm doing this for me to make me happy." When you're really not. Seriously, guys, like, it, it, no matter what it is you want to change, whatever it is, it, do it. Do it first for yourself. Then, it, then if there's something else, you know, if you if you've got kids, let it be your kids second. Sure. Not anybody else. Like I, I didn't lose weight because my I wanted all of a sudden my wife to walk by my wife to be like. Holy moly! Hot damn! What she's done? <laughs> that was never part of it. There was there was never the I want to walk by and, and get that look from her. It was I want to feel better. I'm tired of being fat. I'm tired of looking in the mirror and being mad at myself. I'm tired of my knees hurting all the time. I'm tired of being the last person to finish every workout just because I'm fat. Because I know I'm in here busting my butt in the gym, usually more than anybody else that was in classes. But because I made other poor choices, I my performance sucked. And then. I started getting things together, and now I finish the workout way faster. I feel way better. I wake up and I'm happy. I have even more confidence, which for some people is hard to believe because I already walked around <laughs> like I was Fabio on steroids. Like, just love yourself. And, and if if you are somebody that's listening to this and you're like, I can't do this, send us a message. I, I will be happy to talk to you. Like, yeah. just, just do it. Hit us up on Facebook or come down to the gym at Mid-American Martial Arts. And, you know, here here's to, to drive – that home is that it's well known throughout the fitness community that women after getting a divorce are some of the number one people that get personal trainers. Sure. Right? Because it, it's that kind of, well, I'm single now, I'm getting shape and I'll show him. Right. I'm going to get back on the market. I'm going to look better than that ever. revenge body. I'm going to be the hottie, right? right. And, you know, the revenge body, right? You're right. And I, I know some trainers who, who specifically market to that. Sure. Market to newly divorced women or, or divorced women in general. And because because it's a it's a it's a market. It's a market segment unto itself. Isn't right. that crazy? That is crazy. Right? right? Because of the psychology behind it. Uh, but anyway, right. Again, do it for the right reasons. And speaking of doing it for the right reasons, we, we've got some more information for you on why to eat well for the right reasons. And it's sure. not just overall health, but we found uh, a chart for you. And again, we'll post it on our Facebook for you to check it out. Products and being food in this case, not external products like hair care products. Do you use product, by the way? I do not. I, Every uh, time I get a haircut, it was so funny the one day I went and got a haircut and a lady goes, do you use product in your hair? I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I go, gel? Oh, actually, I probably said mousse because I'm old as hell and that's right. the first thing that pops in my head. Right. And uh, she goes, yeah, hair product. And I looked and I went, do I look like I use hair products? They always ask me because I, I have a faux hawk. And so they always like, what do you put in? And I'm like, I guess I have done my hair that way for so long that my hair just does it by itself. Now I wake up and my hair is just that way. I'm like, no, it's good. This but man, you've seen me. Like I walk right. around with bedhead 
You, you always got a little bit of bed head already got, this morning. I got I mean, all over the place. Right? Yeah. I, I'm, I never comb my hair because I'm always like, I'm either working out, I'm doing jujitsu, I'm doing my right. tie or something. For the reserves or right. Something. Or my hair's just constantly just all jacked up all over the place. And when they go, how do you wear your hair? I go, uh, I don't know. <laughs> However, when I, when I run my hands through it in well, the morning, that's what it looks like. Take off, so I'm not really sure where to go with this conversation. <laughs> uh, useful products, products being food in this case, uh, for the body. So for your hair, green vegetables, beans, and salmon. It's very good for healthier hair. Uh, uh, for the brain, salmon, tuna, sardines, walnuts. So basically anything high in omega-3s right. uh, and, and good fats, good for your brain. Muscles, bananas, red meat, fish, eggs. Uh, what I'll say about bananas is try to stick to the green bananas, right? They are uh, lower in sugars and have a lower insulin effect on your body. So the green bananas. Uh, and remember, guys, all fruit, all fruit has a lot of sugar in it. So be very careful right. about fruit. Uh, for your eyes, corn, eggs, carrots, of course, carrots. Come on. Right. I remember as a kid, it was like, if you eat enough carrots, you can see in the dark. <laughs> I don't remember I don't know if that... that Are really... carrots one of those foods that if you eat enough of them, your skin will turn green? Or green. Orange. I'm I don't an know. idiot. I'm an idiot. I think it is carrots. Anyway. They might. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm going to try it, but... So all your dark green vegetables, your broccolis, your Brussels sprouts, your cabbages, uh, I, I'd imagine your um, collard greens and your kale is very good for your lungs. Okay, your heart, tomatoes, potatoes, prune juice. Okay, prune, I, I thought prune juice, okay, bowels, yep. Yeah. <laughs> I was about to say prune juice for conservation. Right. Yep, there's your bowels, prune juice and yogurt, which that's for all your yogurt being all your probiotics. probiotics yeah, I would add good. kefir in there as well. Yep. And your kombucha that... <laughs> I screw that up so bad all the yeah. time. And someone's going to just call me up and be like, hey, idiot, this right. is how you say it. Please do, by the way. Right. Please I feel do. like you mispronounce a lot of words. We just try to do it. With, this is not an English show. Gusto. We, gusto. <laughs> We're Gustavo. We're Gustavo. Isn't that the dude from uh, one of the Disney movies, Gustavo? Uh, Beauty and the Beast, Beauty right? and the Beast. There you go. Yeah. Good segue there. Right. We're good, Obviously, man. for bones, anything with your vitamin D, milk. Although celery and oranges, that kind of strikes me as funny. Yeah, celery. I'll have to look that up. Interesting. Skin, blueberries, salmon. Salmon's on here a lot. Fish in general is just fabulous yeah. for you folks. Right. Um, you know, I, I did some research on, you know, you see those things about tilapia. Don't eat tilapia. Yeah. It's going to kill you. You I know, think everything kills you, honestly. Well, yeah. I mean, there's there's traces. But usually when, when you see studies like that, like tilapia was, part of it was mercury. Part of it was what they're feeding them. Like you need, you need dump truck loads based on the studies they did. Like the amount they give to a, a lab rat or a mouse, like we would need, you'd need a dump truck load. Guys, don't be afraid of fish, eat fish. Obviously, if you can get wild caught, they've shown that there's lower mercury levels in wild caught uh, than in farm raised, eat fish. Don't be afraid of fish. It's good for you, eat it. Um, it's low in fat, high in protein, got a lot of great omegas in it, so go for it. Sushi! No doubt, sushi, but there's hardly any fish. Sashimi, I'll give you right. that. Right. Sashimi. Do you eat a lot of fish? Uh, I try to. My wife hates seafood. so. Oh, man, I'm in I... such the same boat. It's no pun intended. Sure. Um, my my whole family won't eat fish. And as much as yeah. I want it, like coming home at night at 8, 30, 9 o'clock at night, last thing I'm going to do is cook fish. Right. But I love some blackened fish. Yeah, I'll uh, go to, if I go out to lunch usually from work, um, I'll try to go somewhere and and, and eat seafood where then I don't have to worry about it. But. When I used to go to Whole Foods, I, I I had to stay away from the meat counter. Just one, because they have a fabulous meat counter, but they oh, have yeah. a great seafood section. And I was like, okay, I want one of every wild caught that you got. What's your favorite fish? Oh, that's tough. Not really. There's not that many kinds of fish people Probably normally salmon. eat. You like salmon? Yeah. I do love salmon. I love trout, dude. I No, I do love trout, too, but I, I grew up eat eating salmon more often. I grew up eating trout. I grew up eating haddock, too. You don't hardly ever see haddock anywhere. No. Uh, my mom, when I was growing up, tricked my younger brother and told him it was sea chicken. Oh my god! Because <laughs> he wouldn't eat. He was such a picky eater growing up. Told him it was sea chicken and he ate it. But we used to get broiled haddock with butter, and I used to eat the daylights out oh, of it, man. But we did a lot of trout fishing growing up too, so we always eat, ate trout. Uh, fresh trout is awesome. Yeah. Uh, when I when I see it at the grocery store, I'll grab some trout and and cook it. It's so good. We used to catch um, when I, when I lived in Idaho, we would catch rainbow trout a lot. Oh yeah. And, and, fresh and that was really good but i probably just eat more salmon now because it's easy to get well yeah it's yeah. it's yeah you can you can get frozen out right. and get yeah, cutlets yeah, frozen anywhere, little fillets yeah. so did you see the did you ever see the the rock dwayne johnson's diet he eats like five pounds of cod every day jesus that's a lot of fish dude that's but a he, big man well yeah he's a monster but 
I was some it ended up being like thirty pounds of food a day or something ridiculous. So he and just works on movies to pay for his food. Bring up search search the rocks diet real quick. It, it's an insane amount of food. He and, and Michael uh, Phelps might be in the room. Somebody no, he eats way more than the Phelps, I think. Well, I don't know, it only says five thousand calories a day, but I think it's the actual weight of the food. Ten pounds of food. Ten pounds of food a day. Holy smokes. That's Right, and he his diet's probably nothing compared to the elite bodybuilders. Right. So he's, where does it say? He's forty. Range of eggs, right. rice, vegetables, two point three pounds, pounds of cod, cod, twelve eggs, and hefty portions of steak and chicken. Hefty portions. He would eat. He would eat a thousand calories worth of cod by just alone. Well, because it, it's it's uh, high in protein and good fats. He spends fourteen hundred dollars a year on fish if he buys it in bulk. But did you see um, the movie uh, the documentary Born Strong on Netflix? Yeah. The, the amount of food. Oh my god. He said like a thousand bucks a week on food. He was almost like I have to force myself to eat. Yeah. I get I up do. and I eat. Then I train. Then I nap. Then I right. eat again. And then I train. Then I force feed. And then I. <laughs> it's like oh my gosh. This is this is kind of crazy. So his first meals at four a.m. He eats ten ounces of cod right off the bat first thing in the morning. Seven meals a day. Wow. And, and that diet's nothing compared to what a lot of the elite bodybuilders right. are eating. They'll probably eat twice that. But he weighs like 270, so he's yeah. a big dude. Yeah. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed the show this week. You're listening to Treadmills and Tangents right here on The Answer. You're helping wellness show. This is Coach and Timmy signing off. We'll see you guys next week. Check out our Facebook. Check out our Instagram. Check out all our social media. Our website. We post the show after it airs every week on our website, treadmillsandtangents.com. We're always putting out good information, keynote speeches, and videos, and memes, or whatever you want to call them. Everything. We get information out there, guys. So please hit us up. You know, send us a message. Tell us what you want to talk about, what you want to hear. Okay. Hit up, hit up the 945 FM 1420 AM. Let them know what you want to hear from us. Anything we can do better to help you guys live a healthier and happier life here in the Big Yellow. We'll see you next week. Have a good weekend. Tune in each Saturday morning with fun banner on what it takes to live a healthier, happier, and more vibrant life in the Big O. Treadmills and Tangents with Coach Aaron Cerrone and his army of wellness warriors.